Good afternoon to our viewers. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Sarah Nicole Santos, and I'm part of the AB Capital Securities team. Just a reminder for those who cannot access us in Zoom, you may also join us in Facebook Live. Today, we have with us Century Pacific Foods Inc., or CNPF, one of the biggest Philippine branded food company with over 40 years of business experience, 200 plus products, and 19 notable brands, including Century Tuna, 555. Argentina, and many more. And to give us a deeper dive on the figures, we have Mr. Gregory Benzon, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice President of CNPF. Also with me is Mr. Carlo Arguelas, Branch Head for AB Capital Makati Branch. Hi, Carlo. Good afternoon, uh, Sarah. And uh, thank you, Mr. Benzon, for joining us here in our program. Thank and you for having me. Briefing. Um, uh, if, uh, without further ado, I mean, if, uh, we, let's, uh, go on with the briefing. Okay. Uh, I guess that's my cue. Good day to everyone. Uh, and thank you for inviting, uh, Century Pacific Food Inc. Uh, I pray that uh, you're all safe and healthy, whether you continue to work from home or are back in your offices. Uh, we thank you for joining us uh, during this afternoon's uh, call to discuss Century Pacific Foods um, full year 2021 earnings performance. Uh, as uh, uh, the team mentioned, I'm Greg Banzon. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice President. Um, here with me today is the Investment Relations team composed of uh, Dapti Texon and uh, Chase Gerlan. Uh, you should also be able to see the slides uh, on the uh, presentation format as uh, we are using today. Uh, we will walk you through our full year unaudited results uh, to be presented uh, by DAPI, after which I will outline our outlook for 2022. Uh, we can then have some Q&A uh, to further articulate items in the report that you may want to, know, to learn more about. Uh, so let me turn you over first to DAPI. Uh, DAPI. Thank you, Greg. All right, so jumping in straight to slide three, where we summarize our 2021 financial performance. For the full year, consolidated revenues increased by 13% versus 2020 to reach 54.7 billion. This was driven by the strong growth exhibited by both branded and OEM export segments, which increased by 10 and 29% respectively. CNPF continued to accelerate in the fourth quarter increasing by 18% versus the same period the year before, boosted by the branded segment, which was up 21% year on year. OEM exports, on the other hand, continued to exhibit growth in the fourth quarter, achieving an 8% increase compared to the year before. The OEM exports business continued to benefit from the reopening of global markets and prevalent health and wellness trends but growth began to taper in the fourth quarter as global freight rates soared, hampering further growth. In terms of profitability, net income growth clocked in at 20% year-on-year for the full year and 14% year-on-year for the fourth quarter. These double-digit growth rates were driven by higher revenues and favorable tax rates due to the implementation of the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises Law, or CREATE, and an income tax holiday granted to a new tuna manufacturing facility, lowering effective income tax rates. Now, moving on to slide four, where we can have a closer look at CNPF's revenue performance, you'll note that for the past five years, Century Pacific has been growing consistently year on year, with revenues reaching a high of 54.7 billion in 2021. That is reflective of a 13% growth versus, this, versus the past year, leading to a double-digit compounded annual growth rate of 14%. The consistent performance is a testament to Century's strategy, continuously strengthening our core business, branded marine and meat, as we invest in emerging businesses such as milk. Overall, in 2021, the branded segment held the lion's share of the business, contributing 78% to sales split into marine at 31%, and meat plus milk and others at 24% each. The OEM segment, on the other hand, comprised 22% of the entire business. 
zeroing in on segment performance on slide five, here you'll see that Century Pacific's top line growth was driven by the strong performance of both branded and OEM export segments. The branded segment increased by 3.7 billion in 2021 as demand for consumer staples remained resilient, exhibiting a growth of 10% year on year following 2020, which saw extraordinary performance as demand spiked due to strict COVID related quarantine restrictions. Century Pacific's top line growth was also driven by the robust sales of the OEM exports business, which grew by 2.7 billion last year. We saw a strong recovery in institutional sales due to the global reopening of key markets. At the same time, proliferating health and wellness trends across the globe are driving the demand for our coconut products. Now going to slide six, a closer look at the branded segment, which is the majority of our business. Branded posted a strong performance for the year, clocking in a growth of 10% to land at 42.8 billion, following the spike in sales seen in 2020 as consumers adjusted to the ongoing pandemic. Looking at quarterly revenues, the branded segment registered a growth of 21% year on year, landing at a high of 11.1 billion. This can be attributed to the continued resilience in demand for consumer staples and value for money goods. Recall too that in 2020, after the spike in sales seen in the first half, demand normalized in the second half, leading to a relatively lower comparable base. Branded segment performance was also supported by key innovations and improving customer service level. It's worth noting that in 2021, as opposed to the year before, this, despite strict lockdowns imposed in some quarters, pantry loading did not occur in the same magnitude, nor was it as prolonged, indicating that consumers have adjusted to the pandemic. Thus, the demand that we saw in 2021 was deemed as largely organic. Now, slide seven uh, may be familiar to some of you, but we'd like to share it again, as we believe these are the driving forces behind consumer demand for our goods. In 2021, we saw the beginnings of a K-shaped recovery with two different type of, types of consumers emerging from this pandemic. Those belonging to the higher socioeconomic classes are generally insulated financially, but most consumers are constrained. These are households belonging to the low to middle socioeconomic classes who are already feeling the financial impact of the pandemic. Thus, the shifts in consumer behavior that we saw at the onset of the pandemic are proving sticky. Many families are prioritizing spending choosing value for money goods and still opting for home cooked meals to save more and gravitating towards brands that are safe and trusted. They continue to prefer consumer staples and essential goods, especially tried and tested products and brands such as those found in our portfolio. So overall, there remains a strong demand for affordable, packaged ready to cook and ready to eat food and culinary products. Categories that Century Pacific offers with our portfolio of market-leading brands that span across multiple price tiers. As a result of continued consumer confidence in our brands, we saw a year-on-year -year increase in our market shares across all our segments. In Marine, where Century Pacific dominates, our full-year market share increased to 83%, driven by our multi-brand portfolio, led by our flagship brand, Century Tuna. We also have a full roster of marine brands that cut across different price tiers, which allows us to capture the growing demand for value for money goods. We have also solidified our market leadership in meat, where our flagship brand Argentina is the dominant player. Market shares increased to 51%, a growth of three percentage points due to the relevance of our value for money offerings amidst elevated fresh meat prices. Lastly, in milk, where we are a number two challenger, we gained share notwithstanding a competitive environment, with our full year market share hitting 23%. Birch Tree Fortified has become the go to value for money immunity boosting brand in the powdered milk category. Overall, our market share gains were a reflection of consumers' strong preference for market leaders and trusted value for money brands. This was also supported by Century's on ground execution as our customer service level improved despite continuous logistical challenges. Innovations are a key pillar of our growth story as a company. 
Here, you'll see the robust lineup of innovations that we launched in the past, as well as some new products rolled out in 2021 that help support the growth of Century Pacific. Moving forward, we expect these innovations to continue to drive long-term growth for the business. On to the OEM export segment on slide 10, which comprised 22% of our revenues. OEM exports clocked in a growth of 29% year-on-year, outperforming consolidated revenue growth. This performance was driven by, one, our tuna OEM export business, which benefited from the reopening of key markets globally. We also reaped the benefits of the expanded capacity of our new tuna plant, which allowed us to serve existing demand. And two, our coconut division, which is benefiting from the heightened demand for healthier and better for you products, as health and wellness take center stage among consumers globally. Looking at quarterly trends, we see that OEM export sales remained higher on a year-on-year -year basis. That said, you'll also note that in the fourth quarter of 2021, um, we saw a softening because growth was hampered by global supply congestion. Now going to profitability on slide 11, we are pleased to report that Century Pacific's consolidated net income landed at 4.7 billion in 2021, posting a growth of 20% year on year, despite cost pressures amidst a challenging operating environment and on top of a high base last year. Recall that in 2020, CNPF's net income grew by 24%. As expected, we saw a softening in the gross margin of 140 basis points versus 2020 due to the general rise in input prices globally and the higher contribution of the lower margin OEM business. This was partially cushioned by the implementation of our strategic price increase program, ranging from 1% to 3% across the company's different segments. At the same time, due to our proactive procurement strategy, we had ample inventory in 2021 that allowed us to lock in prices early in the year. EBITDA margin contracted by 40 basis points, overall largely sustained at 13%. CNPF continued to invest in innovations that will deliver long-term growth, but simultaneously implemented cost optimization programs to consistently deliver a healthy bottom line in 2021. Effective income tax rates dropped by 810 basis points from 24.3% down to 16.2%, lifting CNPF's overall profitability. This is due to the implementation of CREATE, which lowered corporate income tax rates from 30% to 25%, and an income tax holiday granted to our new tuna manufacturing facility. All in all, CNPF saw a net margin expansion of 50 basis points in 2021 due to our strong operational performance and beneficial tax rates. As a result of this extraordinary growth, Century Pacific saw healthy cash generation in 2021. Our robust performance gave us room to navigate through macroeconomic challenges, building up ample in inventory to hedge against rising input prices and supply risks. Overall, we were able to generate 3.7 billion operating cash flows, which we reinvested in capacity expansion programs and sustainability initiatives. Total CapEx investment for the year amounted to $2.2 billion, covering the expansion of our meat and coconut manufacturing facilities, as well as the commissioning of our solar PV plant in Mindanao. We were, able to, we were also able to provide our shareholders with special dividends last year to give a healthy return on capital. In sum, we are pleased with the overall performance of Century Pacific for 2021. It was a challenging year, Yet, the company was able to deliver strong double-digit growth for both top line and bottom line following a high base in 2020. Despite cost pressures and supply chain challenges, Century Pacific's profitability improved due to a robust operational performance and favorable tax rates, which allowed us to reinvest in long-term growth and sustainability initiatives. This also puts us in a good position to navigate through 2022. And with that, I now give the floor back to Greg, who will share with you more details about our outlook for 2022 and beyond. Thanks. Thank you very much, Daphne. Um, indeed, it's been a very challenging, but uh, quite satisfactory performance in 2021. Uh, 2021, as you know, proved to be a very challenging year, but we were able to pull through. 
and deliver a strong back-to-back -back performance coming from that uh, strong performance that we reported back uh, last year on our, how we did in 2020 uh, during, at the height of the pandemic. We continue to be able to capitalize on opportunities uh, this year, uh, despite a volatile operating environment as uh, demand remained quite resilient for our products, uh, validating our strategic priorities as a company. Long-term growth as a key uh, as a key is a key, key imperative as we invest in uh, emerging businesses of uh, dairy, coconut, plant-based food, and pet food. Uh, parallel with continued energy we put in to strengthen our core segments, as Dapi mentioned earlier, uh, particularly in the meat and marine uh, side of the business. Uh, we do this by solidifying our market leadership positions uh, in those categories, uh, while uh, aggressively working at growing the categories as, as uh, shown by, by Dapi in her presentation. All these were uh, reflected in the robust lineup of innovations launched last year. In marine and meat, we rolled out our value for money innovations to provide our consumers with uh, more affordable food choices, uh, given the pandemic and the challenges that they were experiencing, especially in an environment where rising fresh meat prices and the consumer need for even more convenience and ease uh, of preparation of family meals so as they gather and uh, needed to have variety and options for their families. That's what drove our marketing team in terms of innovations and thinking of ways by which we could serve them better. As an example, the Argentina pork guineling product that we launched last year uh, 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 has proven to be quite the hit among households uh, as demand continues to exceed expectations. We expanded our daily dairy portfolio with the launch of Choco Hero a value for money energy booster for kids uh, in the choco malt space. Thus, we now have a dual brand play in milk beverages with Birch Tree and Choco Hero under our stewardship. So it's very rare, I guess, that you see companies launching aggressively amidst a crisis environment that we were able, but we were able to pull it off, uh, for example, with uh, Guineling and Choco, uh, Argentina Guineling and Choco Hero. On to more nascent grounds, uh, we accelerated our entry into plant-based food as consumers began to embrace healthier and better for the planet food options, making it more affordable, not just here in the Philippines domestically, but globally as well. Um, a lot of the consumers in the plant-based space are not exactly what you would call hardcore ve vegans and vegetarians, but it's actually the flexitarians. And there, this is what's driving demand for affordable options in the plant um, plant based food space. So, as such, we have started to export our unmeat brand uh, to the United States, Singapore, the Middle East, uh, China, and are uh, piloting uh, even in Australia. Last, uh, lastly, but uh, certainly not least, we ventured into the fast growing pet food category to provide pet owners with more affordable, accessible, and nutritious uh, food choices uh, for their beloved pets. I guess there were this, the pandemic and the uh, lockdown situations highlighted the need uh, for even more options um, and uh, available, uh, steadily available product for brands in the pet uh, food space. And uh, we saw that opportunity and uh, marched forward as well uh, with the launch of Buddhist. On the M&A front, uh, we pursued inorganic opportunities uh, that support our strategic priorities and strengthening our core segments. As we mentioned, it's an imperative for us to keep our marine and meat uh, side of the business uh, continue to be strong and uh, assert our leadership positions there. Uh, we announced in December the acquisition of the, the Lego brand a leading brand in the sardine category with a long heritage of more than 60 years. Um, so well-loved by consumers and very strong uh, market uh, share positions, in, especially in some geographic cuts uh, across the country. Uh, we see this as an accretive and highly synergistic acquisition, given our sizable participation already in the sardine category. Uh, moreover, this acquisition is much aligned uh, with our mission to provide affordable nutrition to our consumers, giving us even more scale in sardines and strengthening our core marine business. 
Lastly, we continue to make headway in our journey to becoming a more sustainable and responsible company. These are some of the spotlight projects under our uh, plant uh, preservation pillar, planet uh, preservation pillar. Uh, first, plastic neutrality. Uh, 2021 marks our second year of being plastic neutral as a company. This means that we are able to offset our plastic usage through a plastic recovery program. To date, all brands making use of flexible packaging are now certified uh, plastic neutral. Second, our coconut division launched, in, uh, launched our 2028 Road to Carbon Neutrality program uh, last year. Uh, this program envisions that we are able to plant 1 million trees and donate these to small uh, smallholder fa farmers. Um, to date, more than 300,000 trees have been planted already. So this is a way by which we are able to sequester uh, greenhouse gases from the environment uh, to the same level that we are uh, expelling and being able to sequester the same. Lastly, we completed the commissioning of a 5.2 megawatt solar uh, uh, power plant uh, uh, from, our, from our largest manufacturing hub in the country. So solar now supplies 15% of our energy requirements, all aligned with our commitment to reduce our impact to the environment. We strongly believe that our strategic priorities and growth ambition coupled with our commitment to sustainability as evidenced by our progress in 2021, sets us up to achieve long-term sustainable growth as a company. Entering 2022, we see the pandemic is now starting to transition into being endemic, although uncertainties might still lie ahead. Then the war in uh, Ukraine and Russia broke out, a so-called far, far away war, yet all of us around the world are impacted by it, especially by way of uh, supply chain disruptions and cost increases. For Century Pacific, we expected uh, high input prices entering 2022, uh, but planned accordingly. However, due to the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia, increases in input costs are exacerbated, uh, pushing commodity prices even higher than expected. That said, Given our recent back-to-back -back performance, we believe Century Pacific is poised to weather uncertainties and remain resilient against headwinds. Uh, we started the year strong, uh, seeing favorable resort results for the first quarter, a high single-digit growth fueled by the branded segment, which grew mid-teens year on year as demand for consumer staples and value for money goods uh, remains resilient. We have also been actively managing risks, taking measured steps to deliver a decent bottom line. Our team has a price increase program in place that is being executed in tranches to cushion the impact to the consumer uh, of rising prices. Uh, we, we have a proactive procurement strategy, locking in decisively when prices take favorable dips or proactively buy when we see prices trending unfavorably. We also maintain ample inventory to mitigate, to mitigate supply risks as we have done uh, in 2020 and 2021. Most of our key raw materials are already priced in for approximately one to three quarters to minimize our exposure for the year. We are also implementing cost optimization measures uh, just to provide an additional buffer to ensure that we will deliver a decent bottom line. All in all, despite the challenges that we are seeing for 2022, CNPF is still intent to pursue a double digit top line growth for the year, which will be supported by resilient demand, innovations, expansion, and uh, strategic price increases. Hopefully as the environment becomes less volatile, we can provide more concrete guidance by second quarter. That being said, over the decades we have operated Century Pacific uh, over, uh, uh, and we've been able to navigate through various macroeconomic conditions and market cycles. We've seen similar moves in the, in the seismic uh, shifts uh, before. 
our, our business uh, has proven to be resilient throughout because of the essentials and staples nature of our portfolio. As such, we tend to deliver low double digit to mid teens growth in good times, but outperform uh, during challenging times. So we hope to be able to sustain uh, such a uh, record. Ultimately, we aim to be good stewards of your capital uh, and your trust, managing for the long term, investing in high growth areas and sustainability to future proof the business while balancing short term considerations. I hope you have found the report insightful and informative, and we now open the floor to your questions. Thank you, Gregory and Dappy, for that very insightful presentation. And now to join us again to moderate the question and answer portion, may I call on Mr. Carlo Arguelas. Carlo. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you again, Mr. Vansan, for, the, for, for a great uh, presentation and for really uh, uh, dissecting and showing us uh, what the plans are and uh, what, what we're uh, transpired in the company. Um, uh, we, we have a question here, sir. How much revenue growth do you project by end of uh, 2022 uh, for, uh, for the group? We're still looking at being able to pull off another uh, double digit uh, growth performance in 2022, probably a bit uh, muted compared to you know, what uh, uh, we've seen in the past, but uh, still, hovering above, uh, you know, going above a single digit and somewhere in the maybe low teens. I understand. Okay. And uh, another uh, specific question here is, uh, Tuna skip jack prices average about $1,900 per metric ton last month. Right. And uh, it's uh, up about 15% month on month and 41% year on year. Right. Uh, they remain 34% elevated year to date. So right. is the spike due to higher fuel prices? And what else are the reasons? Is this something transitory or is this above your fair value range for tuna? Right. Um, the, the, if you do an analysis of what drives uh, skipjack or fish prices, uh, tuna fish prices, uh, a big part where about 60% of the cost uh, of uh, fishing companies are actually fuel. So as you see increases in the prices of fuel, there's a corresponding increase in the uh, price of fish. Uh, having said this, uh, a lot of the increases in the present um, environment is driven by, I guess, demand. Um, what happened is uh, there's an abundant fish catch but a lot of the can canneries all over the world and brands all over the world uh, did not expect this spike in fuel prices as caused by the Ukraine-Russia war. So they were caught a bit flat-footed, uh, not having enough stock, and they're just catching up, making sure that they have enough buffer. So we see, we expect the, this, uh, this spike to be temporary and it will correct over the next, maybe next, maybe next few weeks. So maybe it's a bit of a transitory increase. Yes, um, thank you for that. Uh, is, is, is this uh, above your fair value range for tuna? Or will, yeah. you do the, will you do, what will you do to protect the margins? Right, one is that we've always, um, we're, active, we're actively as a company and as a team, uh, a part of the uh, tuna management team or the tuna business uh, unit leadership. Uh, headed by Carlo and Daya. Um, we have a weekly huddle and we look at uh, where fish prices are going and their opportunities to buy. And as mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, our procurement strategies require us to uh, see or spot opportunities uh, to uh, buffer up on inventory. And that's what we've done. Uh, for most of 2021, uh, we would always go ahead of the curve. When we see opportunities to buy at a low price, we would buy. We've done uh, that as well in uh, 2020 for this year. We're covered up to uh, several months forward. Therefore, we're not actually impacted by the uh, present price of 1,900. And um, 
um, because of the buffer, we can sit it out for a while and wait for the prices to correct. Okay. To the question if it's above, uh, it is within a range that we expect uh, the, the, the fish prices to be. Having said that, we have also proactively worked on a price increase uh, a program um, to capture both uh, potential and uh, sustain, let's say, uh, changes in fish price as well as other materials like tin cans. Understood, okay. Uh, another question, uh, how much will inflation and uh, a rise in other input costs affect your margins and will you raise SRPs and how will this uh, affect the volume overall? Right, so two components to that question. One is uh, inflation. So. Um, this is a reality that we're facing in 2022. Uh, we already started seeing this in half two of 2021. And uh, we have proactively or progressively worked at balancing between, um, uh, as I mentioned, a strategic procurement uh, uh, strategies of buy program of increasing prices while keeping sensitive to what consumers are able to afford and are willing to pay. So uh, there's a bit of a pass on element uh, to our pricing, uh, uh, to our cost uh, situation, uh, but uh, uh, with a good balance of uh, what is within, I guess, uh, an affordable level to, uh, of our core consumers. Noted, sir. Um, how has your production adapted to the new normal? Uh, for the past two years. Right, so we're very proud of how we, uh, we respond. I, I get invited to talks to, to maybe articulate maybe the story behind Century Pacific being among few companies, not only here in the Philippines, but on a global scale that was able to continue operating despite the pandemic um, and keep a safety and health and safety record uh, of about 99.9%. Uh, MAPA uh, dealt uh, the original COVID variant, COVID-19, Delta or Omicron, uh, all our plants were able to run uh, at uh, full blast uh, despite uh, those surges. And we were able to do this by a simple approach of ad adhering to uh, WHO uh, prescriptions on uh, plant safety. Uh, plant and employee safety. That was uh, paramount and the top priority when the pandemic hit. And we had like a health and safety program uh, implemented, uh, which is very basic distancing, uh, uh, PPEs and all of that have, were put in place, as well as a very robust and aggressive uh, vaccination program. So um, we were 100% in terms of vaccination by way of a combination of uh, acquired vaccines as well as uh, those delivered by the LGUs or uh, by for, for our employees through the LGUs and um, campaigned this aggressively within the organization called uh, uh, Oplan Sana All, uh, Operation Ligtas Lahat. Um, as a result, as I mentioned, 100% of the employees were vaccinated uh, well with ahead of, I guess, the trends uh, on a national scale and um, the PPEs, uh, the safety protocols, the vaccination programs, and the awareness programs uh, help protect um, our employees and continued to enable us to operate at high efficiency, high effectivity rates, um, despite the pandemic. Okay, sir. Um... Our infection rate is less than 0.1%, I think over the almost two, uh, uh, two years and one month that the pan the pandemic has been uh, has uh, first uh, has been around. And uh, what is the status of uh, legal sardines? Now? And uh... so we're in the final stages of the negotiation and the transition. Uh, a lot of work, especially, is being put together, especially on the legal side, and making sure all of the uh, elements of the acquisition are. Uh, are, uh, let's say, on, on good uh, footing. Um, it was uh, a good value uh, in terms of the price. I think the, the value, the valuation is 
are very favorable. And um, we're very excited to get started. I think uh, we'll start invoicing the brand, hopefully after all of this, after closing the deal uh, to its completion, uh, we hope to be able to start invoicing in a couple of months. And um, it, it's, it's, it's bolt onto our existing sardine base and it actually catapults us to, as you may have recalled, we're actually the number three company in sardines and we're automatically catapulted to the number two position with the acquisition. From number two. Yeah, I'm gonna, thank you for, uh, thank you for the answers. And I'll just go to the crowd also, some, some more questions. Those who have their questions, please feel free to chat or type them in the chat box below. So we can read your questions. A question from Gar uh, A. Garcia with the increased market share in the sardines category after the acquisition of Lego. How confident are you that you will get approval from the Philippine uh, Competition Commission? Actually, the hurdle rate is uh, much higher. Um, our increase in market share probably about, it will put us somewhere, uh, maybe about uh, one fourth of the market. So uh, well within, uh, uh, very well within the, the I guess, the, not really constraints, but the, it becomes uh, an area of concern by the Philipp, uh, Philippine Competi uh, Competition Com Commission uh, when it gets to a certain level, but uh, we're, we're well within that range. Okay, so there's a lot of questions coming out in the chat box. Growth or employment in uh, Century Pacific? Um, at, at the height of the pandemic, we actually added about 1,700 jobs uh, because we opened uh, the third tuna factory. Um, we, grow, <clears throat> we grow the size of the employee base in accordance to, I guess, what is right in terms of fit. Uh, in scale that the business requires. And um, given the need for increased capacity uh, and timely because the pandemic created surges in demand and that uh, the, the level of demand actually was sustained uh, because consumers, I guess, got reacquainted with uh, some of our brands and categories. Uh, we've been able to keep um, uh, the level of um, uh, the headcount uh, as needed. So um, right now, our key priority is um, expanding our capacity in the coconut uh, side of the business. And I think it's going to be uh, marginal given that we're already at a very high base, maybe about uh, 500 or so uh, additional employees, um, manufacturing jobs uh, will be generated. Okay. Uh, what, what will be the market share of CNPF on the sardines? and uh, market post-legal acquisition. So in the previous reports, I think we were somewhere, by, by way of AC Nielsen, uh, puts us at about anywhere from about, six, depending on which report you read, about 16 to 17% market share. Uh, we were the number three players, as you may uh, uh, have understood in the past, the sardine category is quite fragmented. Um, so the number six, 16, 17% share gives you number three. Uh, Lego would probably add on about anywhere from seven to nine percent uh, percentage point increase, uh, uh, bringing us maybe closer to about twenty five percent market share. Okay, so there's another question here. Um, it's a, it's about the upcoming election. So the question is: Is the presidential election going to largely affect? the market supply or any effect with whoever president is going to be elected? <laughs> um, we cannot speculate post-election, but uh, as elections happen, uh, we've seen actually very minimal uh, impact on demand for our business or for our brands uh, or for our categories for that matter. Uh, historically, we track this uh, either by way of uh, presidential elections or midterm elections. And there is a short um, and a slight spike uh, during the period, but uh, not enough, not, not really significant. So we, we prepare for this by way of uh, making sure supply is a little bit more uh, robust uh, during that period. 
but it's it's not enough to really move the needle on an annualized basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another question here regarding operation cost. So with the sharp increase in input cost, in order to protect your bottom line, do you plan to scale back a bit on selling or marketing or prom promotional spending? So we're approaching the increase in commodity several ways. One, as I mentioned, is a, a very um, a, a strong procurement strategy, uh, opportunistically buying when prices are low, uh, or when we see it trending up, uh, we, we, we're able to secure uh, inventory moving forward at a more favorable cost. That's the first. Number two is um, uh, a bit of price increases, uh, but only within what the, the consumer can tolerate uh, and uh, afford. But uh, at the same time, we don't pass on everything. We look at ways and opportunities to have more efficiency. Um, so uh, reduction in costs, um, some of which uh, are actually drawn from uh, being more selective in our marketing investments. Um, promotions, though, we, we tend to keep it um, active uh, because that's what consumers would be looking for, especially in a inflationary or uh, recessionary environment. So uh, on a promotion side, uh, we see this as a way of rewarding our consumers for making it more affordable or providing relief uh, to consumers on a periodic basis. Okay, so there's another question here regarding the acquisition of Lego sardines. Are you confident that the Lego acquisition will be approved by the PCC? Yes, um, the hurdle rate of um, being watched or monitored by PCC is uh, we're way we're way within uh, the hurdle rate. Um, I have a question here, sir. How will the acquisition of Lego, Lego be funded? So it's a <clears throat> we we have a robust cash flow as uh, presented by DAPI, but at the same time. Uh, it's uh, uh, we also resort, resorted to uh, we went to the capital square to the square debt actually. Okay, and how has the reception been for your product launches like Unme and uh, Uncheese? All right. So thank you for that question. Um, we're very excited with Unme. The volume in the meantime is uh, let's say. Uh, Starting out to be, we're in early days when it comes to unmeet. Uh, but on the domestic front, I think um, we have been able to spark a lot of excitement uh, on, the, on the domestic market, both from a consumer perspective. Uh, we've been getting very favorable result, uh, 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 feedback on our products, the burgers, the nuggets, uh, the, the sausages, uh, the grounds. Um, we, we, we've started selling our pizza uh, uh, online and digital. So it's both from a retail space and on a digital space doing very well. Uh, but even on the food service space, uh, we've had very um, exciting clients that have come to us. Uh, some uh, we cannot uh, identify. Um, others have uh, used our brand, like for example, 7-Eleven. Um, they... They were first adapters or early adapters to carrying a uh, burger product sold through their stores. And I think out of uh, uh, the 7-Eleven Unmeat bur uh, Burger uh, uh, product is actually sold in over 1,800 of the branches of 7-Eleven and doing very well. Um, and um, as I mentioned, other food service companies have taken on the brand. But more interestingly is... Um, how we've been able to get a lot of excitement and uh, traction, early traction in key markets abroad, uh, particularly in the Middle East with UAE as an anchor, Singapore um, uh, with uh, customers like Fairprice and Red Mart and, uh, and TUC as key customers, and uh, in the United States, um, as well as uh, in China, in the premium supermarkets in China. So where we're getting the most traction is in the UAE and uh, in, in Singapore, but our lead market is in the USA. And we're in the process of um, uh, making all the rounds of presentations uh, to uh, key retailers and brokers abroad 
Uh, we've pitched to the big name uh, retail brands and we have been onboarded by the top two distribution companies. In the US, you have to be carried by a distribution company to be able to get into retail. And the top two are companies like Kehi and uh, Unified Grocers, both of which uh, have un uh, onboarded um, Unmeet. Okay, well, so there's another question here. So is CNPF looking at any possible expansions or acquisitions for the or in the Southeast Asian markets? Uh, we continue to be, to be, let's say, not active, but we continue to be open uh, to opportunities, uh, but always within uh, what makes uh, good business sense um, and fits into our strategic um, uh, priorities and direction. Uh, our, our mission, and uh, as um, I guess the, the Po family has articulated many times, uh, really is to uh, nourish and delight everyone everywhere uh, every day. And um, in keeping with that, um, when an opportunity presents itself along those uh, within that vision, uh, we do uh, look at, have a study, and uh, if the numbers are right, then uh, things happen, I guess. Okay. So I would just like to read this. It's regarding the um, employment, um, creation of the employment. Um, it was answered already by Ms. Dappy. So we would like to congratulate uh, CNPF for generating 500 quality manufacturing jobs this year, despite having a pandemic. So thank you for um, giving jobs to the Filipino people. So um, if there's no... No more okay, questions. So, Should we? Question here, sir. Can you discuss the vulnerability of CNPF to rising commodity prices? Yeah. Um, so the thing is, uh, we are uh, we are participants in the category, um, maybe to the extent of uh, market leaders in some, uh, strong followers uh, in others. And uh, the rising commodity prices are, I guess, part of the landscape. Uh, as we see commodity prices increase, so do our competition. Um, and it, so I guess it's, it's a category thing. And um, what we've been doing is as we see the need to balance between, uh, let's say, uh, as I mentioned, there are strategies of procurement, there are strategies of uh, increasing prices. But as we do this, we have a, as we speak, actually, there are groups right now that are talking to consumers and getting insights on uh, how they feel and, and think in, in terms of the, pri the, the prices that, uh, that are already present. So, for example, among the insights that we've learned is in this very in high inflation environment, in a recessionary environment, uh, uh, although the economy is starting to pick up, so recession isn't exactly in place, but in a high inflation environment, and when costs are, are increasing, um, some of our brands and products are actually spot on with their needs uh, because as prices of fresh meat, for example, fish and chicken continue to increase, um, can products become more affordable? And as prices of uh, LPG, for example, increases, um, they want to be able to afford uh, LPG. I think prices of LPG has doubled. And um, so they have to uh, economize in terms of the use. So they want to cook less often. And products like canned tuna, for example, you you can you can eat it straight from the can as so as a consumer our consumers would feedback and that's why we're seeing despite increases in price um, be, driven by commodity volume continues to grow this is in this is consistent with our observation that um, we do well uh, when the economy is uh, let's say stable but we do even better when the economy is challenged mm -hmm. Oh, so, sir, given with what you said, do you plan to scale back a bit on uh, selling or marketing or promotional spending? Yes. In yeah. Yeah. Marketing, yes. Uh, selling, 
um, we we do have a, a one of our strategic advantages our coverage of the market uh, where I guess our, our products are present in in probably I think a coverage of as much as about 70 percent of the retail retail uh, environment uh, retail stores uh, nationwide so we do um, make sure that our selling in our investment in the selling organization are maintained where we don't scale back on some promotions so that we continue to provide consumers uh, uh, the, the, the pricing breaks uh, that they deserve. Okay, and uh, with the sustained results of 2021, would you be able to give us more insight on the integration or the synergies that CNPF is already or will be enjoying from the acquisition of Pacific Meat? Uh, I think so. Um, the base, the, the, the strong base in meat and marine gives us, let's say, heft um, to nurture and uh, uh, babysit uh, the, the Pacific meat business. And we have a long-term view uh, of, of this part of the business. Um, and we, we think that within the next uh, five years, uh, by way of strengthening the base, going into, into innovations and improving our portfolio, uh, a lot of exciting things can happen on the PMCI side. Uh, Unmeet, for example, is resident with uh, P PMCI. Uh, it's an, we, we were enabled to do Unmeet uh, because of uh, PMCI. Okay. Sir, um, uh, with the recent, you know, we didn't expect this. Is CNPF business affected by what is happening in the Ukraine? Very general question, but maybe we yes. should talk. Along with the rest of the world, I think um, fuel costs, uh, logistics costs, uh, some of the some of uh, commodity costs have increased because of uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, but um, as I said, we've seen um, disruptions of this nature or similar uh, in the past, and have been able to. I guess as a team and by way of experience, uh, whether uh, such challenges. What message can you give our retail investors uh, out there, out there uh, everyone watching? Uh, uh, so I think we are consistent. Um, we are able to, I think in one of the slides that DAPI showed, we've been able to show a compounded annual growth of about 14% on the revenue side. Um, similar double digit growth on the bottom line side. There are some breaks uh, next few years because of CREATE uh, and the uh, income tax holiday, holiday resulting from our investment in the third tuna uh, factory. So um, we, <clears throat> we continue to grow. Uh, we're, very we're very consistent in terms of delivering uh, increased value. Um, to uh, the shareholders by way of uh, profit consistency. But um, alongside this is our, we keep an eye to sustainability um, as part of our overall corporate strategy, uh, being good stewards of, uh, I guess, uh, the resources provided to us and making sure that uh, this is sustainable. Uh, we're plastic neutral, as mentioned. Uh, we expect to be carbon neutral by 2028. Uh, Fifteen percent of our um, electricity consumption is generated to, to renewable, and uh, a, a bigger percentage is clean, uh, clean energy. So, there yeah, consistency in sales growth and and, and profit, um, double digit ahead of uh, most of our peers. Sustainability, and uh, I guess uh, uh, I, I would add to this is uh, good corporate governance. Okay, thank you for that, um, Mr. Banzon. So I think um, our time is up.
for the question and answer portion. So thank you, Carlo and Gregory. And that sums up Century Pacific Foods Inc.'s earnings call. Thank you so much to our viewers, CNPF's uh, Mr. Gregory Banzon and Ms. Dappy Texon, AB Capital's Mr. Carlo Arguelas for joining us. We're having another earnings call on Monday. So that will be on April 11th with Shakey's Pizza Asia Ventures. So please do join us and register for the event. Once again, I'm Sarah Nicole Santos from AB Capital Securities and your host for this earnings call. Wishing you all a good day. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Miss Dabby, Mr. Greg. Greg. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, AB Capital, for supporting our team. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a safe afternoon. Sarah, thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, everyone.